Hello and welcome to our first edition of the Bison Broadcast. We're excited to bring this informational session to you at home so that we can hopefully answer some questions and provide some insight to the many things that are going on involving your education. As we all know, this COVID-19 pandemic has absolutely turned our world upside down and there are many, many changes that have occurred. The first of which was moving to an enrichment and review activity and we're now taking the next step in that, and we're going to have some information on that as well. First thing we'd like to do is talk to you about the today's agenda for our first Bison broadcast. Mr. Rimpa, Mr. Pizzo. Mr. Pizzo, if you want to say hello. Hello, everybody. Mr. Pizzo is, was with us as well, and he's going to be able to go through these slides with me, and he has a couple slides, and I'll be talking about a lot of information. We're going to hopefully be able to record this and present this out so that you can go through this again if you have any questions. The next feature that we're going to do is we're hopefully going to be able to provide a Bison broadcast each week. We're going to have different guests that come on board and different things that happen. What we're going to do for this session is at the end, we're going to provide a link so that you can go in and ask your questions. There might be things that we neglected to touch on, or maybe we just didn't expand upon enough. Maybe you have questions or maybe there's some confusion. We have spent a tremendous amount of time putting this presentation together, getting input from your teachers, input from your counselors, input from Mr. Emmerich and Dr. Wolfram, also reaching out to Mr. Hudnall and Mr. Holt from the middle school. But we realized that we can't cover everything. So if there's some things that aren't clear, you're going to have an opportunity to submit those questions, and then we'll get together next week and answer those. We're going to have two special guests, Mr. Humphreys and Senior Kayla Fries, who will be joining us. She's our student council president. They'll be joining us to go through those questions. <clears throat> First thing we'd like to talk about is the continuity of education plan. Now, this process that we've gone through, going from a brick and mortar building where you're in the classroom, interacting with your teachers, talking to your teachers, moving to this total digital world, to this cyber world that's very new and very different for most of us, this is once again demonstrated the high quality, dedication, talent, and commitment of our teaching staff. I'm just continually impressed as these people had to rally, get together, and put together a plan in just a few short weeks for a world that they've never been that much involved in. So it's really been a challenge. And I want to remind you of that as you're going through this. The frustration that you're having with not being able to be in school, they feel the same way. The frustration you might have when things aren't working exactly right with technology, remember, they're going through those same trials and tribulations themselves. So please try to be patient. We ask them to be patient with you, and I'm asking you to be patient with them. And next, we talk a little bit about the important dates as we're moving forward. Next Monday, April 20th, we'll start with the first opportunity to finish up the third quarter. So we'll have mandatory distance learning occurring, and that first week we'll use to get you caught up. So there might be some things that you needed to clarify. Maybe you have some assignments that need handed in. Maybe you have some questions that you weren't able to get clarified yet. So you have an opportunity for all of next week to finish up the third nine weeks and get as many things together for that, for the grade, for, so we can close that out next the following Friday, the 24th. Then the following week, April 27th, is when we will begin with the fourth nine weeks. We realize it'll be an abbreviated version of the fourth nine weeks. It won't be a full nine weeks. I believe it'll be about between four and six weeks altogether with some missed days here and there. But we're going to do everything we can to salvage and utilize that time as best we can to help get you prepared for next school year or for your college career or the military or whatever job that you're working towards after graduation. First thing we're going to do is talk to you a little bit about the format. It's quite a bit different. You can see at the top there, Mr. Pizzo and I put meat and potatoes philosophy. What that means is we are limited on time. Not only do we not have our full 85-minute block, we have a limited amount of time that we can utilize for you for the day. We also have a limited amount of time that, as I just mentioned, only having about five weeks left. So we want to go to the absolute bare bones necessity, the things that make the most sense and the things that are the most vital and most important for you as you're moving forward. The first thing you notice there is we're talking about classes that are about 45 to 60 minutes, considerably different than the 85 minutes you're used to. We also talk about you only having about four hours of education per day. We've done a lot of research over the last few weeks. Mr. Pizzo and I have attended a number of webinars with experts that are, uh, work on distance learning for years and years that have a lot of research and evidence to look back on. 
Remember, this is not our world. We're used to brick and mortar. We're used to seeing you and your smiling face in a classroom, seeing you in the halls, talking to you, getting the questions answered. It's, it's totally different when you're in the classroom and you can see somebody's face and they're not sure what's going on. Are they getting this concept or are they not getting this concept? So now we're going to be just in a digital world. It'll be quite a bit different. So one thing that we've done is we've reached out to some of these experts to kind of guide us and help us make good decisions for you. You'll see that your lessons are going to include several components, including a weekly agenda to kind of give you an idea what's going on that week, what to look for that day, what to look for as the week goes on. You'll also have several mandatory activities that you need to do, some must-do activities that you have to do. Those will work towards your grade. There'll also be some optional may-do activities. Those are very important too. Those are things that you've done for enrichment the last few weeks, things that you've done when you were in the classroom before. And then, of course, there's going to be weekly checks for your understanding to see how well you're learning, how well you're gathering and grasping these materials. One thing that's so important is that our focus is on the most important concepts and topics that the student needs for the next course in the sequence. Those prerequisite skills as you're going from Algebra 1 to Algebra 2, as you're going from Honors Physics to an AP Physics course, those absolute vital skills and concepts, those are where our focus will be. So again, it's that meat and potatoes philosophy of what is most important to get you through. Remember, I put it in bold, mastery matters, seat time does not. Understand, some of you are going to spend more than 45 to 60 minutes on some of these classwork. Some of you may need a little extra time. Some of you may get it in 15 minutes. It's hard to say. But remember, mastery is what's important. Seat time does not. So parents, hopefully you're also watching this video. If you get to a point where you're concerned that your son or daughter is not spending enough time, you can reach out to your teacher and figure out where they are and how well they're developing mastery for those concepts. We'll talk about how you can reach out to your teachers in just a few minutes. In fact, I believe Mr. Pizzo covers that concept. Right here is one of the most important questions that have been asked repeatedly of us. And, and I, I want everybody to understand a different world, a different time right now, a very different vehicle. So grades are our least instructional concern at this point. We are worried about building relationships and maintaining those relationships with your sons and daughters, with you folks, you students that are listening. The next thing that's important is the concepts, and that's a distant second. And last, absolutely last, are grades. So we, can, we have to set that aside. We're always so consumed with grades. We're so consumed with, the, with what percentage we're getting. What I want you to do is focus as a, as a young student, as a ninth through 12th grader who's mature enough to handle this and realize we're in a very different situation. We need to focus on mastery. Mastery, mastery, that's what's most important. So one of the things we've talked to our teachers and instructors about is assessment with empathy and compassion understanding that each of your situations is very unique. Maybe you have brothers and sisters that are home from college that are hogging up bandwidth. Maybe you're having to go down to the local uh, store to, to grab the, the Wi-Fi that's available from, from, a, from a grocery store or from a, a little restaurant or from a Starbucks or wherever you go for those types of things. Your situation at home is very different. We're going to be talking in the upcoming weeks about some hints about how you can improve your situation we don't have time to cover all those things right now, but we've emphasized to our teachers to understand assessment with empathy and compassion as your situation at home is very different. For you parents that are listening, maybe you're both working from home. Maybe instead of going to work every day and leaving, you're working at home, you're working from home, so you also need bandwidth. Or maybe your situation is different. Maybe you're a parent and your, your hotspot for your home is your phone and you work in one of the industries that are still out there serving our country. So you're out there working, and then when you get home, now everybody wants your phone so they can utilize that hotspot. So now there's added stress and added pressure on you. So we recognize that everybody's situation is different, and we need to provide opportunities for all those students. We're going to be moving towards a pass-fail, zero grading for the fourth nine weeks grading period. That will not be the case for the third nine weeks. We had approximately seven weeks of, of schooling that we were in our brick-and-mortar school for the third nine weeks. So that grade, along with that final week that we talked about just a few moments ago, will finish up your third nine weeks. That will be the typical traditional manner, and you will get that percentage on your report card that you've earned through that third nine weeks grading period. Where it will change is moving into the fourth nine weeks. Fourth nine weeks will be strictly on a pass-fail situation. 
There also is a situation where we have six courses that must remain in enrichment review due to equipment constraints. Those courses are graphic design, your CAD classes, your architecture and pre-engineering classes, as well as your materials processing and your cabinet making. Those courses, you're going to want to refer to your Google pages, your Google Classroom pages that your instructors have from Ms. Peters, Mr. Muncie, and Mr. Stremmel. And those folks will lead you through that process. Your process for those courses will be a little bit different. You, you'll be going through enrichment because you can't possibly, we can't possibly believe that everyone has the software packages that we have available for our CAD classes or the software packages for the graphic design or not very many families out there have a joiner and a table saw and a planer available in their garage to finish those projects. So those classes are going to go by a little different set of rules. You're going to want to refer to your Google Classroom pages with those teachers for those questions. Regarding the remainder of the building, we're talking about regularly graded daily and weekly assignments. So that's going to, that's going to, even though you won't see your teacher in person, you may see them on the video. You may see them, you may be able to communicate with them by phone or perhaps by a virtual meeting. But those assignments that you're working on will be uh, graded uh, very typical to what you've done in the past. We will not be having finals for the year. Again, grades are our least instructional concern at this point. So there will not be finals for those. And some people might say, well, how am I going to know where my son or daughter is at the end of the year? And, and before we think that, well, we're going to get this caught up and we're going to get this made up when we start school in August or September. Well, here's what we have to understand, folks. This process and losing this amount of time, classroom time, seat time, is, is, is going to take us several years. I would say two, three, maybe even four years for us to recover from this. So this process of making up these gaps and, and reemphasizing these skills and doing remediation where it's necessary and building, those types of things are going to take several years for us to recover from. So for right now, we cannot get too excited about finals. We cannot get too excited about grades. You'll see how it's going to work. As you get graded daily and weekly, your assignments will go in to your assignments into the grade book. And wherever you end up, anywhere between 70 and 100%, you'll get 100% on your fourth nine weeks grading period. If you end up between one and 69, you're gonna end up with a 69% on your uh, final grade for the fourth nine weeks. And if you don't do anything um, and, and you're not able to because people are going to have problems with their, even with the hotspots that are out there, even there's situations that families are involved in that are very, very difficult, then we'll go with what we've done in the past, which is the 50%. Now, I know a lot of people are going to get excited and be concerned about this. But remember, grades are not our concern. What our concern is, is developing and sustaining and maintaining and developing stronger relationships with students. That's number one. Working on the concepts, working towards mastery. That's a distant second. And number three, we'll continue to be grades. And it's last for a reason, and it will remain there. This will work itself out, folks. This is nothing that we need to be concerned about right now. Right now, we need to be worried about getting additional materials in front of our students, additional materials and concepts in front of you students so that you can learn them. The next part is very, very important. Communication is vital for this whole process. I'm going to ask Mr. Pizzo to talk a little bit about some of the things we have set up. Mr. Pizzo? Thank you, Mr. Rimpa. Um, communication is, is uh, always vital. Um, especially with our distance learning that we're, uh, we're all in, engaging in right now. So um, for students communicating with your, with your teachers, um, they're going to have uh, virtual office hours, and you'll be able to log on to the uh, Google uh, Classroom pages for your teachers to see when their availability is. So, um, they're going to do about six hours a week, um, some in the morning, some in the afternoon, to give you a, an opportunity to reach them uh, with questions. Um, it, each individual teacher will come up with their own, their own hours, but you'll be able to access it through the, uh, through the Google Classroom. And then you can also um, connect with, the, with them, uh, you know, their office hours in their Google Classroom. As far as parents um, reaching out to the, the teachers, um, we would uh, encourage you to use the um, EduStar gradebook um, to check on uh, communication with them. And then uh, there's always an email. And remember, our email addresses are the first name of, or the last name, I'm sorry, the last name of the teacher, their first initial, and then at flbapps.net. 
Um, so that is that's the the way to get in communication with your teachers. Next, uh, we want to talk about access to the high school. Um, I know there's a lot of people who have left things we left so abruptly. Um, unfortunately, on the 13th of March, the governor didn't send out the, the close of school until about 3.10 Friday afternoon. Everybody was gone, so students have things in the high school um, that they would like to access. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have you uh, email Mrs. Montgomery, and her email is, again, her last name, Montgomery, first initial J at flbapps.net. Uh, we would ask that you email her by Friday if you want to come in and give her, um, let her know what you want. Specifically, if you've left things, uh, left things in the high school, usually just essential equipment um, that you're going to need, you know, glasses, um, retainers, you know, anything of that nature, anything for technology, essential equipment, textbooks. Um, email her uh, what you need specifically, you know, list your name. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a schedule and we'll be uh, opening uh, or allowing you to come to the high school on Monday, the 20th. That's uh, um, April 20th. And what our plan is, is that you will just drive up to the front. We will have your items there and hand it to you in the car. No one will have to get out of the car to access the building. But if you could uh, get those emails out to us um, by Friday so that we can work on the schedule, um, that'll be how we would... Uh, tackle that. As far as band instruments, that's going to be exclusively run through Mr. Gilson. So please email Mr. Gilson um, for arrangements to set up uh, to pick up your band instruments. And then for those students who utilize their lockers, um, you'll be getting details uh, later as we get closer to the end of school as far as getting into your lockers and cleaning things out. Again, when you email, if you have something in a locker, it could be a gym locker, Please, um, if you feel comfortable, let us give us your combination so we can go in and retrieve um, the essential equipment that you need. Remember, essential equipment only. Um, and then uh, that will be allowing access to the high school. Mr. Rempa? Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. The next part that we need to address is, is the saddest part for Mr. Pizzo and myself. Every year, we get the wonderful experience of, of going through seniors last few weeks of school. It's important for all of us. It's fun and exciting for all students, nine through 12, but there's really something special about the seniors last few weeks of school when they realize this is the last time I'm going to do this. This is the last time I'm going to do this as they're moving on to the bigger and brighter things in their lives. We sent, an e uh, an, uh, we sent a school rush that had a letter from Mr. Pizzo and myself talking about what had gone on so far and we talked about several events that unfortunately we lost out on and were canceled. And there's several more that we have to add to that list due to the social distancing uh, regulations. Um, our school musical, we were so excited. Students were already working on that. They had parts. They were already practicing and getting ready. The Powder Puff Game, which is just an incredible uh, event every year that brings so much excitement to the high school where the juniors ladies take on the senior ladies. Um, down on the football field in a, in a flag football game that just brings out a lot of fun and excitement. We lost out on that. Our academic barbecue through our student council. Um, un unfortunately, we're, we're not going to be able to participate in that. Our Celebrate the Arts, which is just one of our marquee events every year where we fill the whole northern, all the northern halls of the, of the high school and all the kids get a chance to, you know, really celebrate their accomplishments. Um, everything from our AP Art Studio um, students to students that are, you know, performing and usually in the cafeteria, either either musically singing or with their instruments. Mrs. Caccini loves to have her uh, different bake-offs and different things from her family and consumer science classes. Mr. Muncie, with all the work that he does with the Bridge Crush, these are staples in our in our community, staples in our culture here. And losing all of these just breaks our heart. Trust me. Um, there is there is nothing worse than when we come to the realization that another event must be lost, especially for you seniors. The spring sports season we know has already been uh, ended by PIAA, and again my uh, my heart goes out to all of our all of our spring sports athletes. I know all the time that you guys put in, all the dedication, all the commitment, all the sacrifice, all of you incredible student athletes that make us so proud and represent Fort LaBeouf in such great ways, and uh, you seniors especially, 
Um, I'm not much of a hugger, as everybody knows, but boy, it just makes me want to just give each and every one of you a big hug um, because I know how much this means to you and how much you've put into it and how much joy you've brought to me personally watching you perform all these years. So uh, we're so sorry that, uh, that you've lost out on that part of your journey. There are some things that we're working very hard at. Um, Mr. Gerard, our National Honor Society um, advisor, is working right now already on a program. It might be part virtual, most likely it'll be pre-recorded, but we're going to have a National Honor Society induction ceremony. Uh, we're hoping to release that on Wednesday, April 29th at 7 o'clock, um, and you'll be able to link to that and, and watch that process. So you and your parents will be able to experience that together. Mr. Gerard is, is working on that currently, and, and he wants to make that a reality. So be, be looking forward to that. That should be coming up here very soon. Honors Convocation is another one of our incredible staples here at Fort LaBeouf. Every year, this community gets together and donates so many, just thousands and thousands of dollars to you students so that you can move on and support your post-secondary dreams. And this is just one of my favorite events every year. I look forward to it. Mrs. Uvegis and I spend a tremendous amount of time working with all the teachers, all the local organizations, and all the committees as they award money to you folks. We are still going to go through that process, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do it together as, as, as in, in the auditorium. Um, if things change by May 20th and these regulations change, you're absolutely right. We'll do everything we can to make it happen. But with the order that we received from the governor, we don't believe that's reality. So we're going to move to a pre-recorded format, maybe some of it actual virtual and live, and uh, be looking for that. Be looking forward to that, seniors, as we recognize you and award you the scholarships that you have earned and uh, work towards taking that next step towards your post-secondary dreams. Next is baccalaureate. In fact, uh, Mrs. Humphreys has been working with our local pastors already, talking to them about how we're going to make this happen. We want this to also happen. We, we don't want you to lose out on this. And those uh, local pastors are already working behind the scenes, getting ready, even though it's still April. And this is not until June 1st. They're still already working. So they're, they're very excited about this opportunity for you, and they don't want you to lose out on it. Mrs. Humphrey, your, your senior class advisor, is working with those people to make sure that this happens. Again, it's going to be a little different format. It's going to be a little different than maybe what we've done in the past, but sometimes different is good. So maybe it'll expand what we do in the future. And commencement, had a lot of questions, a lot of emails, a lot of people reaching out. Commencement, the first thing you can see that we put there is it will happen. There is gonna, it is gonna happen one way or another, folks. We will make sure that we recognize you and we celebrate all that you've done. There is nothing more important to Mr. Emmerich and Dr. Wolfram. They've talked to me about it several times. They've conveyed that message from our school board. There is nothing more important seniors and senior parents than us recognizing your graduation. And that commencement ceremony is going to happen. You notice I put their unknown format. There's still a lot of weeks between now and June 4th. We have a lot of time for our country to digest what's going on and for our legislators to make decisions about social distancing and, and all that's involved in this process. So we do not want to be hasty and make a, a, a split decision already. We want to make sure that we have as much information as possible and we get as close to that date as possible. If there's any way that we can get maybe in the gymnasium and in the auditorium and, and maybe have some additional restrictions, maybe have some different things with regards to space, like they're doing at some of your local grocery stores and local department stores, well, then we would, we would put those things in place. That would be wonderful. If we have to take it maybe to the football field and maybe we end up down there on uh, Carbonito Field and we spread the chairs out and we are only allowed to invite certain people or maybe we're able to film it from there, but we're looking at that as an option as well so that we can at least have some personal interaction so that you can understand, you know, the excitement that goes behind this wonderful event. And if those two things still are not able to happen by June 4th, well, then we'll continue to look at options. We've looked at different things with a virtual format. In fact, uh, um, I'll be participating virtually watching the Penn State Barron um, commencement ceremony, which will be happening in a few weeks so that I can take notes and hopefully learn from those fine folks on, you know, their process and what they have involved. In fact, this whole program that we're putting on right now, Mr. Pizzo and myself, came from one of the Penn State Barron 
um, presentation. So I'd like to thank Dr. Silver and Dr. Miller for uh, letting me steal their idea, utilize their mirror, their format as best as we could and as close as we could. And thank you for the information that you provided me in uh, putting this together. So we'll watch their, their, their virtual graduation and see how it works and see what we can incorporate. Um, there's also other options that people have, have explored, such as uh, there is a local drive-in in our community. Maybe we could do something along those lines. The only reason we're hesitating is we want to make this as personal as possible. We want to make this as special as possible. You've earned it. You've de you deserve it. Um, this, this class, I, I am really, really enjoy. I've gotten to know so many of you as uh, many of the, the boys participated in football in fifth and sixth grade. And I had the wonderful blessing of working with you guys. And so trust me, our heart breaks every time we have to cancel an event for this group of young men and women. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure this commencement happens. And we're going to make sure it's special for you. So please be patient as we continue to come up with ideas and continue to look at what other people are doing around the country to uh, make their commencement special for their seniors. Next, this has been a very difficult time for so many of you. And we want to make sure that you believe we're going to get through this. Some of you might be lonely because of where you live. Maybe you don't have neighbors close by. Maybe um, your, your parents are keeping you in your home um, because of all the concerns that are out there. And we understand that. And we respect that. But we want to make sure that you have some resources available to you. And if you take a look here, there's several um, phone numbers here. There's, some, there's ways to get a hold of them through text. And uh, so if you're struggling and you need support and you need help, please, please reach out. There are people that are very interested in helping you. And some of those people are your counselors. So if you take a look here, you know, any questions you have about scheduling, whether it's academic, whether you need emotional support, whether you need support in other ways, go to the Guidance Google Classroom page. Your counselors have spent a tremendous amount of time putting resources together and putting things there to support you and help you. So reach out to your counselors, just like you always do. Even though you can't walk down the hallway and make an appointment with them or stop in to see them, you can reach out to them through this, through this, this uh, capacity here and uh, make sure you're, you're helping yourself and taking care of yourself or a brother or a sister or a friend or a neighbor or whoever that might need it. Your work permits, we can make those happen. If, if those of you that are, you know, maybe your parents are in a situation where you need to now get out, go out and get a job. I know this has impacted us in so many ways, impacted our society, impacted our whole community in so many ways. Work permits are available. Please email Mrs. McGuire so you can see her email there, mcguiret at flbapps.net. And if you need anything with transcripts, those of you, um, you should be already, remember our goal for you is to have applied to your colleges by Thanksgiving and have your application done and, and your deposit done by Christmas. If you're still going through that process, we understand that might be the case. If there's anything you need regarding transcripts, reach out to Ms. Landis and you can see her email there, landisb at flbapps.net. Let her know what your needs are. And then the ladies, whether it's Mrs. Montgomery communicating with Mr. Pizzo or Mrs. McGuire or Mrs. Landis um, communicating with me, we'll get to you, get an appointment made, and uh, we'll take care of it. And the last thing I put there for resources is hope. We all need hope. We all need hope to, that we're going to someday get back in this building so we can interact with each other. Um, we need hope. And, you know, reach out and seek each other. Do it through virtual, your virtual meetings. You guys, this, this generation is so much more comfortable with this whole virtual world, so much more comfortable than Mr. Pizzo and I are. And so utilize your strengths and reach out to each other and take care of each other. Reach out to your teammates from your sports teams. Reach out to your, your classmates from dinner theater, from the musical. Reach out to the, your friends from clubs and activities and uh, you know get, get together in a virtual world to, to kind of hear each other and talk to each other and laugh together. And as we talk about that hope, I want to remind you there's some other things that we're looking at as well. Those of you that are newly accepted to the tech school program, Mrs. Gadley has informed me that they're still planning on ha having that dinner with your new instructor, and uh, they're looking at maybe July for that. So keep your, you know, keep monitoring your email, keep reaching out to Mrs. Gadley and asking her what she's aware of and what's going on, because we're gonna the the Erie County Tech School wants to make that happen. That's a very important um, step in the process of of 
moving to the Erie County Tech School and developing those lifelong skills, getting to know your professor or your teacher up there is very important. So make sure that you take advantage of that and be looking for that. And then lastly, Mr. Pizzo and I have been brainstorming. And one of the things that we came up with is, you know, hopefully, you know, the experts are telling us that eventually the social distancing is working, flattening the curve is working. So we're so hopeful that we're going to be able to get together soon, whether it's June, July, August. If there's a time when the bans are lifted and we're able to get together, we're looking at a picnic for our seniors, perhaps down at Carbonito Field. Maybe we get together with a picnic. Uh, we do some some cooking out. If there's one thing I know about the students of Fort LaBeouf, they know how to cook out and they know how to grill out. I've seen that plenty of times. So we could grill out down at the stadium, out in the parking lot. We could go in and utilize Carbonito Field for volleyball games and cornhole tournaments, get together that way. We've talked about maybe getting a uh, local band um, of, of Fort LaBeouf graduates that are interested in coming out and playing while you're there to just kind of interact and see your senior classmates and interact with them. And then possibly even having Mr. Gilson set up the uh, stadium in a little mini drive-in theater type setup and you take blankets out in the evening and we get together and maybe watch a movie or something along those lines. So we're looking at some options. We're excited about it and we're just waiting for the go. We're waiting for the opportunity to that the, the governor and, and our legislators tell us that we have the green light and we can start moving forward. So a lot of things going on. I want you guys to reach out to each other. I want you to reach out to your um, to your class officers, whether it's your, your senior class president, uh, Gabby Cook, or whether it's your student council president, uh, Kayla Fries. Make sure that you're reaching out to your teachers like Mrs. Humphreys, who is the senior class advisor. Reach out to Mr. Humphreys, the student council advisor with your ideas. And maybe we can make one of your ideas come to uh, fruition and provide a great opportunity for us. Now, I know you're going to have questions. There's no way that Mr. Pizzo and I covered everything in this short amount of time. So you see down there, there's a link. You'll have to type that into your, into your phone or into your Chromebook or into your computer. And there'll be a little opportunity if you leave your name and you leave your email, put your question. If it's something really pressing, perhaps we can get back to you right away. What we'd like you to do is put those questions regarding today's presentation in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to collect all those and kind of put the same common ones together. We're going to put those ones together. And then we're going to have uh, a couple special guests next week as we have Mr. Humphreys and Ms. Freeze join us. And uh, they'll, they'll help me go through that process. They'll be asking your questions to me and asking, you know, how things are going. The only thing that may change is I have here that we're going to release this at six. We may do it earlier in the day. It'll definitely be next, the, the following Wednesday. We're going to try to do this every Wednesday. Have your bison broadcast every Wednesday to provide answers and, and give you direction about what's going on and how things are evolving and, and on our way. But um, so make sure that you plan on broad uh, on tuning into the bison broadcast again next Wednesday. The time may change, but you'll get an email sent to your um, your school email account with a link there that you can utilize when it goes live on Wednesday. You'll also be able to utilize this through our Facebook account and the school district Twitter and the Pride of the Bison Twitter. So all three of those venues will also provide you with that link and that opportunity to participate next week. Uh, Mr. Pizzo, any closing words? No, we're just uh, glad we got some uh, communication out to you guys and um, we're missing you and uh, we wish you guys um, good luck and we'll be in, in, uh, communication and remember just take a deep breath and breathe we're all we're all going to get through this okay thank you mr pizzo we miss you guys uh, take care of each other take care of your parents take care of your grandparents uh, make sure that you uh, um, realize that remember believe we're going to get through this and we will support one another keep reaching out with your questions we look forward to talking to you again next week thank you <laughs>